702 Afternoons with Relebo Gile Maboja. 14 minutes to 2 o'clock still to come. We're going to have our travel feature. And in celebration of Africa Month, with Africa Day being yesterday, we're going to be celebrating the beauty of the African continent through traveling. And I ask the question again, which are those African countries that you would love to travel to or the African countries that you have traveled to that you absolutely loved and enjoyed? And if yours is, hey, I've only been here in South Africa That is also great too because we are a spectacular, world-class African city, uh, uh, country rather. And uh, I think about some of the places that I've traveled to and I've been fortunate to have been to Nigeria for work, Ghana for work as well, though you try to have a few days to do your own exploring. I would love to go to Namibia from what I have seen of uh, Namibia and our conversations with Iga Motilska. Definitely been to Lesotho and Botswana and Zimbabwe and Zambia, but there's so much more to explore. Iga Motilska is with us. Iga, how are you doing? Excellent. So good to be back in South Africa. I must say I'm fighting the fight with jet lag, but I am getting there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The, 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 what do they call it? Um, uh, occupational hazards, right? Oh, yes. Living with jet lag all the time. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So you traveled recently to Ethiopia. Uh, Yeah, well, actually a few years ago, just before the pandemic, but I thought that today would be a lovely opportunity for us to talk about traveling around Africa since yesterday was Africa Day. And I, I must say Ethiopia is one of my highlights. It is by far one of my top five favorite countries Uh, I was very fortunate enough to spend two weeks there. And I must say, if you are a foodie, it is amazing, especially for vegans and vegetarians, because uh, Ethiopian cuisine is renowned for its very flavorful dishes. It's characterized by rich spices and stews. There's something called injera, which is a sourdough flatbread, which I absolutely loved. It's topped with a number of different uh, spicy chicken stews and lentil curries and various vegetable dishes. And obviously you use your hands to kind of rip off a little bit of this uh, sourdough bread, uh, cover it in those different stews and eat with your hands. And it's such a wonderful experience. And of course, Ethiopia, as you might know, is also the birthplace of coffee. So it celebrates a huge coffee culture and uh, people can go and experience coffee ceremonies. You can walk through a coffee plantation, learn a little bit more about how it goes from farm to table. Uh, You can learn about the history. Um, Gosh, I absolutely loved it. Uh, And, you know, a lot of people also travel for religious purposes. Uh, You know, maybe perhaps they go on a pilgrimage uh, or they want to learn a little bit more about um, the re- like a religion's history and heritage. Yes. And that's something else that Ethiopia offers up. Uh, it was founded in 980 BC, and it's a deeply religious and pious nation. So there are so many different religious sites and artifacts uh, that you can see. And, and obviously it's very interesting because the two main religions are Christianity and Islam, but they also have uh, Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity, Mm. which is very unique in its own right. And so there are are very many different interesting traditions and practices that you can experience while going there. Lots and lots of UNESCO World Heritage Sites, many linked to the Bible and, of course, to the religion. Uh, One of my favorites were the rock-hewn churches of Lalibela. There's also the ancient ruins of Aksum, and medieval castles of Gondor. Uh, so, wow. I could go on for hours and hours talking about how much I loved Ethiopia. Definitely one for the books for me. It's, it absolutely sounds like it. So what would your suggestion be in terms of seeing Victoria Falls from a completely different perspective? I love Vic Falls. And, you know, I feel that as South Africans, many of us are so lucky to go visit this beautiful UNESCO World Heritage Site. And we've obviously all gone during the day, uh, you know, trundled through to go to all the different viewing points. And that in itself is awe-inspiring. But something I did on my most recent trip to Victoria Falls was to go and see the moonbirds. 
Now, before I arrived there, I didn't even know what moon birds are. But the Victoria Falls National Park is open in the evenings for three days during the full moon every single month. Mm, So mm. it's the day before, the day of, and the day after. And it's a completely different experience to go and do a guided tour with one of the rangers. Um, You know, when it's quiet, when there aren't as many people. I mean, naturally, of course, you can hear the roaring and the thundering uh, of the waterfall, but it's so nice to to experience it from a peaceful and quiet perspective. And of course, you should bring your tripod uh, so that you can get these beautiful long exposure shots of the waterfall at night. Uh, but these so-called moon bows are rainbows that are created from the light of the moon. And I must say, it's something that is so special. It offers a completely different experience. Uh, of the waterfall at night and makes for some really interesting uh, perspectives and photos. And of course, it's something interesting and different to see if you've already seen Vic Falls before. Now, you have also been to Kenya. Yes, gosh, I love Kenya. And, you know, very often I think when we travel to uh, different countries, we want to engage with the local culture and the tribes. We want to have a better understanding of their way of life. Um, And I think sometimes we just have to be quite conscious of the fact that there are these cookie cutter, um, you know, quick and fast tours that go in and out to show us uh, different communities. You know, I know that something that's really popular in South Africa, for example, is visiting a township. But I think whenever we visit people and their homes and their communities, I think we need to try as best as we can to do it in a responsible, respectful and sustainable way. And and so I loved visiting some of the communities uh, of the Maasai and the Maasai Mara. And I think one of the best ways to go about it is to contact the tourism board and to ask them for sustainable and responsible tour operators Um, Or perhaps even just looking at the Tourism Board's website uh, for their partner travel and tourism uh, operators. Uh, Or something else that might be a really good idea is just to ask the locals and to look for community-led projects and tours that are actually led by the community themselves, rather than maybe just like third-party tours that, you know, drop in and out uh, that are quick and these kind of like cookie-cutter tours. And of course, it it might take a little bit more research, but I think when we do these community-led tours, it kind of ensures that the community gets the profit uh, or most of the profit and that they can use that for their benefit uh, based on what it is that they need. It also, I feel, gives them more agency to tell their story in their own words. And I feel like it's just a much more sustainable tourism model that will have a positive long-term impact down the line So, um, you know, besides going and seeing the wildlife and the great migration and seeing those spectacular landscapes, it's always so lovely to to engage with the locals as well, like in a in a responsible manner. Yes. And I'm so glad that you take those things into um, consideration because travelers and tourists can have a negative impact on local communities when they are traveling. Even though tourism is being promoted, there needs to be consideration. Now, you've actually traveled to Tanzania three times and once to see the Great Migration, which you missed. What is your advice for those who are traveling to (laughs) see this natural phenomenon? Yeah, gosh. And, you know, sometimes it feels a little bit underwhelming when in your mind you're thinking, oh, wow, you know, I'm going to go see this amazing natural phenomenon. Um, And I think something that we just have to be aware of is that these natural phenomena cannot be planned. You know, even when we know that the animals might be in this area or moving from this region of Kenya to Tanzania or, or vice versa, you know, they're largely guided by the rains and, of course, by the grass shoots. Um, and so though we might have a general idea of when they might be in the area, we'll never really truly know. Yes. So my advice is to always give yourself a little bit more time so that you have a bigger window in which to experience the phenomenon. And, of course, you know, people travel all over the world to see 
uh, various natural phenomena, whether it's um, the sardine run uh, in Durban or the monarch butterflies that are migrating in North America. So I think the best advice is always to give yourself a little bit more time. Naturally, we know that that can also be a little bit expensive. Um, So I think something else is also to just plan a variety of other activities during your time there. So um, in Kenya or Tanzania for the great migrations that you're not disappointed, you know, go and plan a sunrise hot air balloon ride, for example, or go and watch the hippos playing around uh, or snoozing in the mud pools. Go and do some bird watching with a twitcher or a a bird guide. Uh, Obviously, go do a safari game drive. And just like have a really good guide who can tell you about the endemic flora and fauna and and kind of make it all about the destination and the place, not just necessarily something like the Great Migration. Because while we saw hundreds of thousands and possibly millions of animals uh, grazing on the grass, we didn't see them crossing the, the river, of course, and everyone goes to go get those spectacular shots of uh, the wildebeest crossing yes. and obviously the, the crocodiles hunting. But I think just uh, make a trip of it and enjoy the nature, the beauty around you. Get some really good local guides. Uh, and I think then you'll leave with a, a heart full of memories and obviously a SIM card full of yes. amazing photographs as definitely, well. Definitely, definitely. Ego, we're going to have to leave it there, but the great thing is you're still going to be around to tell us more about these fantastic destinations you've been through on our beautiful continent, especially of the traveling now for the past three weeks in Alaska and Canada. We're still going to talk about that.